Dodge Racing. It's overpowering. Hit it! Just lost it all by herself. Caution is out. But on Dale Jarrett, it just looks to me like his car was really fast on new tires, but uh, these guys need to watch coming off the corner here. That car's on fire. Now that's, uh, I believe that's just unburnt fuel down in the exhaust system. Yep. It'll snuff out when she fires the car, and it does. And that unsponsored machine is heading back to pit road for some serious repair. Now Bobby Labonte has been on pit road now. And the only one that's detrimental coming off is that oil pump bell. When it Baby. comes off, the oil pump's not turning, you're not getting oil pressure. Now, Darrell, we, we're 19 laps. I may bring in here and put two tires on and some fuel. I may do four, but if my car's driving pretty good, I may give you two. Try to keep that track position. Please, please give me four tires you want right four now. Tires. And just the air pressure. I don't have enough grip. Here's what put us under the first caution of the day. Watch the white car. It's all by herself. I was looking there right at it. Just spun the car around coming off the corner there. flag they're all going to pit at the same time they'll all be in now Ricky Craven against the wall has brought out the second caution of the day lap 141 that's a shame he was running in the eighth position been in the top 10 ever since that first set of pit stops on lap 20 well I've been watching these cars off of two over there Larry and man I'm telling you they are right up against the outside of that retaining wall you can see the tire marks all the way across it they are high running that corner high wide and handsome Come some guys trying to get laps back. Kurt slowing down. There goes Hutch Strickland, Ward Burton. I don't think Jeff Green I, I just had to win a lap down. It was close. I think he may have made it. I think that 30 was. I mean, I think that we're going to have to have a little transponder to tell us. Well, by our scoring, that he, he did get back on the lead lap. One fellow who did not make it was Matt Kenseth, Bush's teammate in the 13th position. This caution flag. To the good fortune of fellows like Michael Waltrip, Mark Martin, and Dave Blaney, who were in danger of going a lap down. Now, Dale Jr. had a right front going down there. He said he must have run over something. I wonder if something happened to the 32's right front. Kurt Busch's lead had built to 17 seconds over Dale Jarrett. Yes, uh, he was in another zip code. Yes. Right front is now down on Craig. Scoot around him. And now caution is out. We believe it's for Matt Kenseth at turn two. But just to follow up a little bit, Mike, the sustained RPM. You're 8,500 at the start finish line, and you still got to go all the way down to turn one. With that RPM hanging around 85 to 9,000, it vibrates itself apart. That valve spring is moving 75 times a second. Each one of those. That's a lot of work. Saw Kent's is going here and he just gets up too high. A lot like what uh, Ricky Craven said happened to him. And then all this stuff up in here, folks, that's just sand, dirt, rubber. Once you pick it up on your tires, you are out of control. The only thing that'll turn you and slow you down is that big old white thing on the outside there. In Matu oh, trouble down here. A car's trying to get oh, in hard in the wall. That's Bill Elliott. Little Lee, Dale oh, Lee. and Kevin Harvick. A very hard crash for Elliott. Oh, yeah. The first serious incident, or rather for Earnhardt, Earnhardt, the first serious incident of the day. And, excuse me, it was not Bill Elliott, it was Dale Earnhardt yeah, Jr. Yeah, you just saw the red yeah. and white, and I, I yes. thought it was Bill Elliott. And it was hard, Darrell. It was. That was an incredible impact. Field coming around to take the caution flag at lap 228. Boy, that's on the left side, driver's side. I, I, I tell you, I don't like the looks of that, guys. The window net's down. That's a sign we look for. Telling safety workers, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, I'm frustrated, but, but I'm okay. No, guys, he's, he's laying over there. and I mean, that's, that, that's a hard lick. And Kevin Harvick, the second car involved. I, I think Dale Jr. was trying to get in the pits and uh, or somebody was it? There were several, there we go. Almost like maybe Kevin Harvick was Harvick slowing down was trying, trying to get in the pits. Get in the pits. 29 car. And, oh, that's it. I'm telling you, that that's is a brutal a, hit. It is. Kyle Petty just squeezes through there. Has to go to pit road to take evasive action. So does Jeff Gordon. That that that. I don't like the looks of that. 
All the cars have now taken the caution flag and rescue workers come to the aid of Harvick and Earnhardt Jr. You're exactly right, Darrell. Harvick had slowed. He was trying to get to pit road. And Earnhardt Jr. going under him, the two collided. Well, you can see he's awake, alert, talking yeah, to the rescue personnel. He's, uh, I just knocked a breath out of him, I guess. I tell you, they've done such a great job with the inside of these cars and, and the head and neck restraint systems and everything else. Uh, see Kevin Harvick out his car. He just got. I think. I think he's got the breath knocked out of him. Plus, I hope that's all it is. Twenty laps to go. Fifth caution of the day. From the butt cam. Here he is, and he sees. All of a sudden, there's Harvick on the outside. Oh boy. Oh, oh wow. See his hands on the steering wheel. Well, I just am thankful he got out of the race car because uh, that left side lick like that, uh, that, was, that was a very hard impact. Again, I just think it's a tribute to all the things we've learned about the inside of these race cars and how to protect the drivers. Get an update on Dale Jr. as soon as we can. It makes the fuel mileage question pretty moot. When pit road is open, after some of this is cleaned up, we should see the leaders come in and top off for the final run.
18 laps to go under caution for the first serious incident of the day. Kevin Harvick had a tire go down, was trying to gather up his car. Instead, he collected Dale Earnhardt Jr., who pounded hard into the wall. Both drivers got out of their car. That's what you got to do. You got to get out front at the end of the race, and you can win. Whoa. Steve Grissom in trouble with a right front tire. Now, we've got to see if any debris comes off of that car from the tire to cause us to have a caution. No caution yet. Four laps to go. That's a and piece a brake of brake rotor. rotor laying right there on the racetrack. It's, it's kind of hard to tell where it is. Looks like it could be down out of the groove. Boy, Kurt Busch made a great run up on the back of Rick. Those are giraffe spots on the side of that car. Kevin Grubb. Oh, 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 oh. Hold her, buddy. Hold her. Hold her. Those are... Still giraffe spots. They're almost concrete spots. Man. Grubb is trying to make his first cup race. Rick Goodwin is the car owner. Car engine and everything, though, is, is leased. Andy Petrie. Andy Petrie's over somewhat acting like team manager. And uh, actually, the RCR Richard Childress Racing number two Bush crew is going to crew the car on Sunday. It's just not unusual to see this happen here. Uh, get back in the throttle, start accelerating up out of that corner. You, you really got to pinch the car down off of turn two over there because there's kind of a transition when it comes up on the straightaway, the back end will come around with you. You'll see that over and over again. He did a great job of keeping it out of the fence. That, that exit over there, Daryl, it's a tight exit. I mean, you almost run out of racetrack in a hurry. Oh, yeah. It just kind of the way you come up out of that corner and, and it just kind of dumps the car sideways. So he'll have to go on that first lap of 2163. That's probably going to be a little borderline. It's close. say that's a borderline case. And the first-time team has no provisionals. There are three part-time teams trying to make the race. Kevin Grubb, Hermie Sadler. I'm going to get it. No, I'm not. Randy Renfro had a little help. Had a little help from our from Randy one of our Renfro. friends. Uh, yes. Yep. Uh, are the three part-timers trying to make the race. Broken sway bar. Oh, we got trouble. Ooh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the front stretch. Caution. Lap 146. Dale Earnhardt Jr. pounds the wall coming out of turn four. And getting a lap back uh, earlier, Matt Kenseth had passed the leader. He gets a lap back, and it's a save for Kyle Petty and Robbie Gordon who were falling into the clutches of race leader Ward Burton. He was right on them when that caution came out. See some damage on the back of Schrader's car, too. I don't know if that was from checking up. And we have about 35 cars on the lead lap, and I would say all 35 of them will probably be on pit road right here. Right side. Oh, he just gets, he just spins coming off that corner. It, 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 I tell you, that is easy to do, Dick. Uh, as the ignition shut off, as he exceeded the maximum RPM, and there's repairs on Dale Jr.'s car. Go to the garage. Oh, boy. Go to the garage. Come around with him. Yep. He was picking the throttle up off turn four. What you get off of turn four and off of turn two here, both is push loose. Caution out for the fourth time in the Pontiac Excitement 400, 150 laps complete. Wisely. Boy, Dale Jarrett, Ooh. 88 car, he drove that thing in there. Th oh, and he gets into John Andretti and he hit the outside wall. And there goes Bobby oh, Labonte. Man. And Hut Strickland misses Just it. gets by. Wow. That all started because Jarrett, here comes the 17 car, going to get a lap back, but that all started because he's not going to get it back. No, because no, Ricky no. Rudd's the leader, 28's the leader. Yeah, Rudd was just way out front of him. But nope. that all started because Dale Jarrett overdrove the entrance yeah, to turn got three, up high. trying to get back into the groove. He got into John Andretti and Bobby Labonte in 18 had nowhere to go. Yep. There's just no, coming off of turn four here, there's just not enough grip up high. You get out of that preferred line. Jarrett's moving around in his car okay, but it is stuck in the mud, literally, from last night's rains. Bobby Labonte going to have a little extra rear spoiler there to work with. 
see what the replay shows us, but basically what happened. See Dale Jarrett way up high here. Now he picks up a lot of stuff on his tires. He's trying to get down. Bobby Labonte, he spins around because he sees Dale coming down the racetrack. Hut Strickland sneaking by there. And uh, John Andretti became the bank shot as Jarrett came back down the racetrack. See, he picks up all kind of debris on his tires. Tony Stewart in 20 just gets by. And I'm not sure if maybe Bobby Labonte got booted by somebody behind him who couldn't check up in time. Right, Bobby checked up whoever was maybe behind him. Yeah, it looks did. like uh, Nemechek in the 10 car, subbing exactly for Johnny happened, Benson. Yeah. Chain reaction once again. On board from uh, Kenny Schrader's front bumper cam. Matt? Well, Bobby Labonte reporting in that his car is leaking something. First, they thought it was fuel. Then Derek Jennings climbed underneath the car and said it looks like it's now leaking rear end grease. They're going to pull the car behind the wall. That's Dale Jarrett's second car this weekend. Uh, he crashed uh, the first practice on Friday. That's his backup car. They're going to haul Jarrett out well, of the uh, out of the really wet grass there in the trioval and back to the garage to see if they can make repairs. Fifth caution of this race. We've completed 173 laps. Welcome back to Richmond, which has not been kind to Bobby Labonte today. Caught up in Dale Jarrett's spin. Here's another look at it. Both cars in the garage. It's kind of some more of that Gibbs luck this year. You know, these two teams are just snake bit. Now watch Kurt Busch try to snake his way through here. Right about there on the outside. Back down, back down, back down. You're going to open the wall. Stay right there. Come on. Come on. Good job. Caution's out. Come on. Clear all around. It all happens in the blink of an eye. Dick Bergeron. Well, Bobby Le that would be with assist. Yes. Robbie Gordon right behind him. Just opens that door. I mean, you know, he's a little wide going into one and that gives Robbie room to get down under him. And, you know, it's kind of a give and take thing. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. Daryl, things are so right close there. down Come there. On. If Robbie Come Gordon on. checks up, Kenny Schrader will get into him. And so on and so on and so on. But yeah. the one thing I did not hear out of that spotter's radio is clear. I did not hear the word clear. Her did a good job of keeping the thing out of the fence. He spins it around, but here come the leaders. And the reason he didn't hear clear, he was not clear. <laughs> now are you're clear on that. Are you clear on that? One to go. Let's go back to racing. Oh, trouble down here. Man, hard. Frank Kimmel in the wall. Frank Kimmel just took off like something happened to the right front. Right. Caution is out. Yep, seventh time in this race. Lap 215. The right front destroyed. I think he must have cut a tire down because that thing, I looked up and he was headed for the fence in a high, at a high rate of speed. This is one of those borderline calls. Uh, the leaders have 29 laps on their tires. They may be coming to pit road, Darrell. Let's see, we're 215 laps. You could uh, do it on one stop from yeah, here if I you had I'd, to. I think I'd come. And I believe they are coming. Here they come. Giving up track position. Here come Rudd, Ward Burton, Spencer, Jeff Green, Ryan Newman. <laughs> the, everybody on oh, the lead man. lap. Oh. Boy, Kimmel's car really took a hard lick. Stuck her shot up that hill. Saw one like that here, and well, here's Dick Berger. Well, Jimmy Spencer. Bush got into the back of him and uh, 
fortunately, there was no damage, just well, a he just bit slides, of contact yeah, after he, that happened. He slides right up in front of him because he got a right rear tire down, and he's lucky he didn't get turned around right there. He's trying to get to pit road, and oh, boy, oh, here we go. Casey Atwood gets into Jeff Burton, and five cars are going to pile up. And Jerry that, Nadeau. That's all because Rusty he had nowhere to go. He just couldn't get down into the end of the pit lane. That 29 car is laid up against the fence hard. Now, Matt Kenseth, he'll get his lap back. Bobby Hamilton in the 55, he's going to get one of his two back. Bunch of guys are trying. Uh -huh. Spencer, he'll lead the race here at the caution flag. Kevin Harvick, Stacy Compton, Jerry Nadeau are the victims of that pile up at turn three. And that was because Rusty could not get it. He was trying to get down out of the way. He's got a flat right rear tire. Everybody bottled up neck behind, bottlenecked up behind him and caused the crash. And Ward Burton in the 22 car, he's in the garage area. Went straight to the garage area, but in the middle of three and four, he didn't even come to pit road. The pole sitter and the best car here for most of this race has parked it. I see no damage. Hmm. Well, let's see what happened to bring out this eighth caution flag. Watch the two car of Wallace. He's just trying to get down into the, trying to go. There's an opening right there. He thinks he can get down right there, but Jeff Burton didn't know. I don't think he knew that what, what was going on with Rusty. He was going to dive to the inside, and here come the seven car. They collided, and the rest is history. And I tell you, you see that 29 car up there? That's the one that's really tore up. Yep. That was back up that was off the turn, turn two. Yeah, I was first. trying to tell. He's got his arm out. Yeah, I don't. Gosh, I don't know what what, what the Jeff Burton was thinking about. He gets into him off a of two. Rusty's got his hand out. Maybe Jeff thought he was shaking his fist at him and uh, was yeah. going to dive in under him there. And Casey Atwood came flying in there on the low side. Right there. Yeah, he he had a run. He doesn't know what's going on. Four car just squeezes through. This is down the front straightaway here, going down into turn one. This is when Rusty first knows he's got a problem. Car takes off up the hill. Burton gets a run on him and they bang together. Now, my, my thought is that Jeff Burton thinks Rusty's trying to block him maybe as they go down into this turn. He doesn't realize that Rusty has a flat tire. From Kevin Harvick, who was swept up in all this, and he is okay. In the back of his teammate, Robbie his Gordon. His teammate, that messes the front of the car up. Gets a run down the back. Here comes the 99, the force nursed oh. him into the outside oh. wall, and that was it, I, Kevin Harvick's okay. The guys I feel for, and it's because I worked there for four years, the fab shop at RCR. This is three weeks in a row. This car is wrecked at Tower. There's a car around under Kyle Petty down in turn mm. two, guys. Just Caution went around on him. I couldn't tell if he got up on the outside, it looked like. Lap 247, ninth yellow of this race. Kurt Bush will not get his lap back. No. Look at Green. Look at Green and uh, Tony Stewart and now all Kyle. Of them are, we're over on the back straight. We're having a little conversation here, guys. Kyle got away from turn two and stays on the lead lap. Pretty There's a bit of hand gesturing going on there. Yeah, they're having it now. He's going to go up here and explain that to you. Hey, look, <laughs> he's got two problems: 24 and 20, and he's right between and the two of them. Now watch this. Watch this. He said that he can't get his attention. He drove up beside him on the left. He couldn't get his attention, so he drove up beside him on the right. Steve? 30, yeah, Mike. Jeff Green just walked, told his crew chief, oh, Todd Berry, he said, you go over to the crew chief, Robbie Loomis, and ask him what Jeff Gordon's problem is. He nailed me twice at Barriers up on the pit box talking to Robbie Loomis. Jeff Green does not like the contact that Jeff Gordon has made. And then when you get done with that, run down that 20 car and ask Zippadelli what he's got a problem with. Short tracks, short fuses. And a lot of bent sheet metal. Yes, sir. A little bit of point for Jeff Green out of that 30 car. And I don't think he was saying you the man. Mm -hmm. No, he's made his point. And we still have 150 laps of this to go. 
Kyle Petty's made repairs and stayed on the lead lap after hitting the wall in turn two. Steve? And Mike, we just heard Jeff Gordon's response when Robbie Loomis relayed the message. Gordon's response was, if he wasn't letting off so soon, I wouldn't have hit him. He's letting off the throttle at the flag stand. It's Jeff Gordon's side of it. We're under caution for Kyle Petty in turn two, the red car, red and black car. It's up here on the outside. Just got up out of that groove, Daryl. Nowhere to no go. No grip. Yeah. Now, up until they sealed this racetrack, people were making great passes up on the outside like that. You could even run higher than that. You could go all the way up against the wall down there. So damage to the sprint dodge in the back, but Kyle stays on the lead lap. He radioed in and told the crew, driver error. From Rusty Wallace's car. Those right just, side tires up there where there's just no grip. When she starts to get a little twitchy like that, there's no grip, around she goes. Matt? Well, Mike, Jimmy Johnson, and he's going to have to go around the outside of him, put a lap down. He's got a problem. Got he's another, got another oh, oh, run. He run hard into the outside wall. No. Our leader. Here comes the land rush back to the caution flag. Holy cow. Newman, the leader. Hermie Sadler gets a lap back. Rusty slides up toward the wall as the right side tires down. Rusty's got a right front tire down. He's going to tear, tear the nose off the thing, trying to get back to the pits. But, you know, I don't know what happened with Rudd. I'm not sure. It didn't look like there was any contact, although, you know, Rusty was there slow going in the corner, but well, we got to take a look at this. But Ricky may have got up in that, out of that, in that well, sealer where there's no grip, and that may have been what happened as he was going around. Every Rusty time there. we've seen a car get a little high down there in turn one, this is what they, they get a, this kind of result. Now watch the There's 28. Rusty. Ricky goes around. Oh. Oh, yeah, he rubbed him. He rubbed him. He sure did. Four, get to the bottom now. You're clear to the bottom. Clear to the bottom. Outside. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just brushed Side and outside. Just brushed Enough to get him out of shape. Take it all. Go to the caution. Beat that car back to the caution. Stick Side perfect. and outside. Jimmy Spencer has pitted. He said that the only problem with the car is he's beginning to lose the front end. So far, every pit stop has been fast, including that one for four tires and fuel. A hard crash at the end of the pit wall. Robbie Gordon has run into the inertia barrier and come to rest at the end of the concrete wall. And what all the water is, this is water barrels filled with water to keep from hitting the end of that pit wall. Yeah, those are water barrels and that's concrete. The, the window net's down. So he is indicating to rescue workers he can get out. But that water barrel was designed by a great road racer, John Fitch, who raced for Cunningham at Le Mans. The first Fitch inertia safety barrier is found on highway, uh, bridge abutments all over the country. And it's also used to good effect, as it was right there here at Richmond. We got, cars, at, we got cars everywhere, Rick. 28 oh. on turn one and two, 31 down here in three and four. What a mess. I know his car is tore up, but could you imagine hitting that wall right there without those water barrels there or without that barrier? And Rusty's tire all torn up as he finally made it to pit road a lap later. Yeah, what he's got to be worried about is if, you know, if it knocks the nose off of it, it looks like he's going to make it around, okay? And once again, Rusty Wallace had a bad, uh, had a left rear down or right rear down over there, caused that big wreck. This time he's got a right front down, took the leader out. And one big problem he could encounter, we talked about it earlier, thinking that's about what happened to Bobby Hamilton is before he gets to his pit box and gets a tire on there, is rubbing that sway bar arm off. Look way up at the top of the racetrack. There you see Robbie Gordon. Whoa. There you see all the water. Yeah. It's, you know what happened? He was probably coming around there and they told him to pit and he tried to turn down into the pit lane and was going too fast. Now from Kenny Schrader. Oh. Well, that's if, the way that if, if you turn on pit road late, if you turn. <laughs> oh, look, is that a little bump? I believe it was, and I don't think oh. that uh, Mr. Spencer is going to appreciate that. No. Now, I remember what the uh, Kurt Whoa. Bush. Whoa! Oh, no, there he goes around. Oh. Kurt Bush, he's going to hit the wall. Ryan Newman takes the lead. Caution is out. 
Uh-oh, look out, Rusty. Look, look out, Rusty. Clear low. Come on, guys. Jimmy's trying to get going to stay on the lead lap here. And that will hand the lead. I don't believe he's got much to, to get going with. No. Wadded it up pretty good. Hands the lead to the other rookie, Ryan Newman. Spence was a, got a little shove off a of two over there, and Spencer was holding him down real tight getting into three. Here we go. He gets into him, and this this is like Bristol. Remember what Kurt Busch did to, G, to uh, Jimmy? Gets into him a little bit. Doesn't really upset nope. the car much. Just a little touch. Side, side by side. Now, see how close together they are and how Jimmy's leaning on him? Even here, even here, you can pull the back end around on the car. And notice how right after that little bump going into the turn, Spencer drives to the right and drives away. And it, you could already see Jimmy Johnson's wheels turn to the right. I, I know why you're laughing. <laughs> tell, tell, tell us. Rookie. <laughs> That's what Spencer's thinking. Right, because he knows eight wheels corner better than four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not going to let that happen. So. so Jimmy Johnson becomes the latest leader to crash out of this race. Stuff off so we can try not to lose my lap. For the most part, none of the leaders with only 11 laps on their tires. All the leaders elected to stay out with 21 cars on the lead lap. Calm on the radio, surprisingly calm. When asked what happened, Rusty. he said, well, he Rusty. said, Rusty. Big crash. crash in the racetrack. Huge big on the back. Rusty Wallace Point crashes. Leader. Point leader. Nobody get lap back. All this started because the 11 car got and Jimmy Spencer got together. They cleared it, and then all this happened behind him. I was looking dead at it. I don't think Sterling is torn up. I think he just slid in there and stopped with a little bit of damage, but not much. Yeah, Brett Bodine, Mark Martin, and Jimmy Spencer were all kind of tangled up there bumper to bumper. Okay. That's the third time Rusty's been. He finally got Rusty this time. He was actually the first car to get out of shape and spin. Here's Steve Park, the one. Terry Labonte, the five car. Rick Mast, the 90 car. Pickles, cornflakes, and Pennzoil. That's not a good combination. No, they got mayonnaise in there, too. So yeah. it's. You got cornflakes, motor oil, and mayonnaise. Right here, Jimmy Spencer in the 41, Brett Bodine in 11. Right here, it, Jimmy had to check up because yeah. of Mark Martin Mark in the Martin. six. Brett Bodine gets into his left rear quarter panel. They that checked broke. up a little bit. Yeah. Rusty spins, and then this is what happens. Yeah, that broke uh, Rusty's momentum. I'd write down the cars involved, but there aren't many that weren't. That might be an easier task. See Jeff Green, Kevin Harvick. From above. For Ricky Craven in the 32, Jeremy Mayfield in the 19, those guys just barely getting through. All those lead lap cars. Darrell, that track narrows up in a hurry when one car gets sideways, let alone two. Well, and it's slick. I mean, the sucker's slick, and you got, you know, you just don't have a lot of control. He just tried to gas it and get it to turn all the way around, and he did, made it worse, kind of like Dale Jr.'s deal. John Andretti, Hut Strickland, Kenny Schrader. Point leader on pit road. I think his, I don't think Sterling's car is hurt anywhere. Got a little damage to the rear, but not much. 55 got a lap back, and I want you to look at it now. He lost oh. his left rear tire. He got. He just got back on the lead lap. There's his tire right there. What in the world? Matt? Well, Mike, down here behind the 48 pit, Jimmy Johnson's crew working feverishly on the front. Kenny Schrader and Mike Skinner. And Skinner was having a pretty good go of it. Yeah, he was. And caution is out on the speedway here. About 35 laps to go. Caution number 13. One inside of you there, the 88. Now you're clear. Get that in, car was pretty undamaged. I tell you, I don't know where Skinner's going, but it's I keep a camera on him. We got. He don't look happy. A radiator. 
Got the radiator. And if the thing don't lay down on him before he gets up there to Kenny Schrader, he may be uh, going up to let Kenny know just how unhappy he is. Well, Schrader went in the corner outside of Blaney, and uh, Skinner was up outside of Schrader. There's just nothing, you know, when you get up out of the groove down there in the first turn, you go around. That's just kind of the way it's been all day. You know, Daryl, I'm glad I'm up here in the broadcast booth. These leaders, they have 32 laps on their tires. There's going to be about 30 laps to go. But what I'm seeing, though, with the lap times, I'm not sure sure the best place to be is out front on those 30 lap tires. I ain't coming in. Okay, you're okay. staying out. And it looks like that's what the leaders are going to do, stay out. Mike Jimmy Skinner. Spencer comes in he, in the 41 car. He has to because he's been falling back, Larry. Yeah, he was... And Kurt Busch in trouble in turn three. I believe he's got a, a tire down. Uh, no caution, though. No caution. Right front. He's been up against that wall, I'm telling you, so many times today. Oh, car's coming. Car's coming. He's another one of those that's on a backup car. Like Hang on to it now. Was. Easy, easy. He's already Come used on this one up about three times. Rear, left rear, left side. Looks like the right sides are down, too, on that car. Yep. He's trying to make it to the pits. I think he's going to be out. Of, I think he's going to sit out on the frame. I'm seeing you, Jimmy. Which is really going to hurt him coming here second the points. Short tracks are hard on these rookies. Right here, Kurt, five away, right here. Good grief. Left rear down, a Look rub on the right front. on the back straightaway. I just don't believe, I don't think. And in the wall is Carl Long at turn two. Nobody near him. Andy Hillenberg goes by without incident. Caution Caution is out. Out. Yeah, I'm all right. And caution laps do count. One car on pit road. That's Randy Renfro. Uh, Jerry, Carl. He has that look. Yeah, he's going to the garage, Jerry. Now this is a fellow Daryl Carl Long who can't afford to tear up that no, race car. That's the only car he's got, and uh, that's not good. Because he actually tore one up out here testing about two weeks ago. Getting off into turn one and two. Oh, he's already, he just drove it in there and the, and the back end start, start, started stepping out on him before he ever got to the middle of the corner. Carl Long driving the walk to cure diabetes. Number 85 crashes out of the Winston Open. Those top 20 positions. Green arrow denotes a driver who will move up. Crash, turn two, sideways, is that Steve Park? Park. I don't know if he's hit anything yet or not. I don't think he has. Caution is out. Caution is out. I don't think he got any damage on the car. Now remember, folks, it's a restart just like the start of the race. They line them up first on the inside, second on the outside. Now, I don't think anybody will pit unless they're at the rear of the field, but this pit stop will not count because that pit stop has to be under green. Now, Park's got a problem. He's got a right front tire down. If that tire starts to come apart before he gets around here, it'll tear the fender off the car. So what happened to Steve Park? He just loses it. It gets loose. It comes around. Boy, look how close his teammate, Dell Earnhardt Jr., in the Budweiser and, and car. Junior can't see a thing. He's just going through the smoke. Hoping that Park's not there. I'd say Dale Earnhardt Jr. locked his tires up. He'll probably have to come to pit road for four tires. Now, if a team was on pit road, here's another look at it. And there's Park gone from the back of Jimmy Johnson's car. And no apparent damage to Steve Park's car. A lot of these cars are loose. They start them out loose because the track's always a little tighter at night. And that's just too loose for Park to hang on to. Now, if a car had been on pit road, when the caution came out, that would have been a legal green flag stop. Long you're past the entrance. But nobody's made one yet. You're going to have to stop. The question is when. Cars, oh, trouble back straight away into turn three. Marlin goes for a wild ride. Here comes a couple of more. Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, an 88 car. Hamilton. What I see is a lot of these cars are cars that pitted and they were back in the back of the pack. Pitted on that last caution. All right, Sterling moving around in the car. The car is taking a hard lick. Dale Jarrett, okay. Rescue workers coming to his aid. Pit road is closed. Bobby Hamilton going to get close to the garage, but not there. 
see what happened going down the back stretch toward turn three. Here's Sterling. Sterling's, got, Sterling's waving. got his hand out the window. He's got a problem of some kind. Oh, he was trying Ward, to let him know. Ward Burton just got into the back of him. He couldn't. He, here comes Dale Jarrett. Nowhere for Bobby Hamilton to go into 55. And Rusty got into the back of, the, of uh, DJ. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. An eight car down on apron. That he escapes another. <laughs> I'm telling you. There goes Park. Darrell, when it happens that fast, what can what can you do? Not a whole lot you can do, but obviously Sterling had a par problem. We see his hand out the window. Okay, you got to remember some folks are doing over 180 mile an hour. That's a hard lick. You're doing 180 mile an hour down that back straightaway. When something like that happens, you just hang on. You have so little time to react. It's got to be watch Sterling right here. Here he comes. Look, he's got his hand out the window. See it right there? And he tries to get down out of the way, and Ward goes with him. But you know, there he was waving to the left, and, and I think Ward thought, go to the left, and Sterling no, 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 was saying, no, no. I'm going down. No, 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 no. That's, the drivers don't do that. When he's pointing that way, he's going that way. But it's, it, that's here's what Ward Well, thought. I think Ward had a run on him, and he just didn't see his hand out the window. When Sterling first started to slow, he was kind of up high. Ward tried to drop under him. Sterling went that way. I, I think I think Ward was kind of to the right of Sterling, and so when he when Sterling when he started to move, they moved at the same time. Yes. And Ward never saw his hand out the window. Darrell, if you look, when he comes down here, he's waving outside with his left hand. Then he comes back to steering wheel, and you see his, see his right hand waving at the last second. I'm just wondering if that confused Ward. I, I just don't think Ward ever saw him. I think yeah. that Ward was fading. He was just to the right of Sterling, and when he started to go, he went at the same time. From Dale Jarrett, looking back, about to see Rusty very large. Yeah. Like we bought another camera. Yeah, I'm okay. You know, Dale Jarrett's going to get to where he doesn't like Charlotte. It's been hard on him. That's actually the same car that he wrecked qualifying when he wrecked over there in turn three and four <laughs> really? years ago. It's the first time they've run that car since then. He's got the third turn blues. An accident that was nobody's fault takes four skilled veteran drivers right out of the Winston. And a crash in turn two. 21 car. Elliott Sadler. Caution is out. Boy, it looked like he went in there how on the outside. I don't know if he got any help or not. Look at him race into the caution. Remember, oh, yeah, this is got no it. holds barred. You've got to come to the flag, baby. This could be, you never know. Second pack. New race to the caution. That crew chief's got to be hauling at that driver. Go, baby. Don't let up now. was a wad right at the flag. It looked, like, it looked like Talladega, the finish in Talladega. It's going from about 180 to about 60 miles an hour in about 50 yards. Now, how Robbie we Gordon this mess out? Ah, uh, Robbie Gordon is right now the number 31 in the 10th position. It's the great thing about computer scoring. I love that. Oh, thank Mock. goodness. Be here all night trying to figure out who was ahead of who. And never would make anybody happy. <laughs> There's Gordon. There's the green arrow denoting he is in 10th place as they came across the line. I don't know what's going on there. Well, <laughs> right now he's in 11 because Michael pulled up alongside him, but the computer, well, Michael, which is unofficial, but it says that Michael is 11th and Gordon is 10th. I think he and Michael came across real close. Michael's actually done a good. He, they his came car across looks good. Daryl, they came across four one hundredths of a second apart. Yeah. Actually, I'm pretty impressed with Michael's car because uh, they come up through there pretty well. Got one car coming to pit road. I believe that's Ricky Rudd in the yes. 28 car. What happens to Sadler here? Oh, there he goes. Looks like he got in just way too high. I, and that's what I saw when I looked up. He was uh, high already on the outside going around. Looked like. Don't think he got any help. During the caution, Newman and Harvick having a discussion under the caution flag about whose fender fits in first. <laughs> as close as they were racing, who would know what it's about? More in a moment. 
We're under caution as Elliott Sadler has crashed out of the Winston. Trouble down in turn one. Jimmy Johnson <laughs> leads from Mark Martin, Bill Elliott, Elliott's teammate Jeremy Mayfield, and Ricky Craven. Elliott Sadler. Let's see if we can see what see happened here. Getting down here into turn one. Well, something must have happened. It had to happen before this. Before this, he got it because he was way. When I looked up, he was way loose before he got to the corner, as if he got tapped from behind. And, and when I he got, I think I know who tapped him now. Well, let's see. Was it? Oh, you don't need Fox ah, Fox for that. Man, that was almost a, a direct hit. Sadler not happy with Ryan Newman. Now, I spiked my helmet like that one time, but they paid me to do it. I think you were in victory lane. I was in victory circle at the I think Daytona. you were there with him. Yeah, I don't think it was. Bam. Daytona 500. And uh, the automatic ball return. And uh, yeah, I'm loading up. No, I don't think I'll do that again. Okay. I'll tell you what, that now, you take Art moves inside. Look at that four car go around on the outside. Now he's going to get three wide. Oh, there we go. That's Jeremy Mayfield, a 19 car. That crowd right there has been, I've been, they've been wanting to wreck. Caution is out. Somebody in that crowd wanted to wreck. I don't know who. And somebody may have just lost a chance at a million dollars. Mayfield was one of the noble five cars in this race. Five drivers paired up with five fans, each of whom could win a million. Now, that's a big break for Rusty Wallace and Ward Burton, who had lost the lead draft and fallen to the tail end of the lead lap. Uh, just a little bit free, a little bit free in the center. You're pretty good, Rusty. You're right there with me. Let's pull one pound air in the right front. One pound air in the right front. Car's a little free. He wants to bump that right front up a little bit. It's just like putting a stiffer spring in that right front. A pound air? What? Uh, how many pounds? Uh, it's about 10 or 12 pounds of spring rate. Let's watch Mayfield. There you see him pointed out by Fox Tracks as he comes into this group. Harvick slips way up high. Darrell, that car just was the tail end was wanting to come around looser and looser the yeah. higher he went on the racetrack. And, and again, that's a product of you got to start off a little bit loose when the track is uh, sunny like this, because tonight that thing will be pushing like a dump truck. He just gets it, it starts to, he just bobbles a little bit and the back end comes around on it. They tried to hook with him and, and he tried to catch it and that's when it came on around. Well, that, what happens, your front tires, your front end takes off. You crank into it a little bit more and then the back end comes around. It's the water barrels there. Uh, still does damage, but not near as much damage as that concrete wall would do without those water barrels there. I got a feeling he'll be taking her behind the wall and working on her. I'd like to know what happened to Harvick in front of him, who got real loose and slid up the hill, and then Mayfield, also running in that high line. Mike, that whole crowd right there. Extremely loose. That's why they ran the second practice session on Saturday. Crash, a crash in turn on the three, track. it is Kevin LePage, who had been in the garage, made repairs, and come back out, but he's crashed in the third corner, and we have our third yellow flag of the evening. Looks like he may have... I don't know if he lost an injury or not. It looked like a lot of smoke was coming out of the underneath the car. Boy, that was quite a break for Ron Horner Day, Joe Nemechek, oh. Kenny Schrader, Stacy Compton, Bobby Hamilton, all right in front of the leaders. That caution came out. That is a huge break for everybody except maybe Ryan Newman in the 29 car. Cars that got pinned one lap or more down include Steve Grissom, Mike Skinner, Newman, Jerry Nadeau, and Hermie Sadler, along with Harvick and Mayfield and Burton, who've both spent a lot of time on pit road. Now, the good news is they only lost one lap. If they'd have had to pit on the green, they'd have lost uh, probably another one. So get the car tightened up, Newman, and get up there on the inside, because there's not that many cars a lap down, and you might be able to get back in this race since this caution came when it did. Shelburne, Vermont's Kevin LePage has been a journeyman Winston Cup driver now for several seasons after being in the NASCAR Bush Series and starting his career in Bush North. This was a one race deal. Yeah, you can see the you can see the thing it blew up there and the so smoke and oil and fluids coming out from under it and all of a sudden it gets on the hind, the hind tires there, the back tires, I'm sorry. Junior always said hind tires. He just spun in his own oil. Yep, and everybody did a pretty darn good job. Watch this four car come sliding by here. Woo! This car is actually owned by Derek Cope, who tried to make this race. Damn Trouble turn one, on, a car comes down a tire and hits the wall. It's Ward Burton. Caution is on the speedway. Well, Ward has just had a miserable night. He just couldn't, he had trouble in the pits, had trouble in the car, now he hits the wall. Nobody's really getting their lap back. Uh, Ricky Rudd takes the caution guy. flag. That's a hard hit for Ward Burton. Oh yeah, when you see that right front stoved up under the firewall like that, that's a hard lick. 
Their team tested up at Thompson, Connecticut this week with uh, multiple Bush North and modified champ Mike Stefanik driving, helping the crew chief Tommy Baldwin with some experimental setups. There were a lot of there were a lot of sparks under Ward's car before it got to the wall, Daryl. From it looked. I would guess the right front, but I'm guessing. Yeah, he probably cut a tire down. We'll take a look at it here, and we'll see what we can see. We can see what happened. Yeah, well, that, that's pretty. That's pretty indicative of a right front tire. Plus, you can see the fender over there was already blown up uh, as he went down into the corner. So, tire come apart. And they are saying that he did blow a tire. And he was 52 laps down. He was just out there trying to make laps after losing that cylinder early in the race. Hey, for the sixth time, at lap 162 for Steve Park. And turn four. Looked like he just got to, got loose and backed it up into the fence. Harvick tried to get one of his laps back. I don't think he don't, quite made no, it. No, he didn't quite make it. Park goes straight to his pit box. A lot of rumors going around about Park in that one car. What's going to happen after this race? If well, he'll continue to be in it or not. Had a bad crash in the Bush race last fall at Darlington and He's been on the comeback trail. Hasn't progressed along as quickly as he would like or that team would like. Qualified back in 20th position. Okay, keep it in right now. Get that on. Probably need to come back in and work on that. It takes a lot of courage. Okay. It takes more courage, I believe, to stay out of the car and get well than it does to get back in the car before you're ready. Well, ask Johnny Benson, who has cracked ribs from a bush crash at Richmond and is sitting out until Dover. Back there all by himself, Larry, right in the middle of turns three and four. Boy, ew, that ooh, four car close. was lucky. Yeah, it was close. That's right. insane. They, remember last wreck they had down there, he went to the outside and just barely made it. That time he went to the bottom and just barely made it. In a row for a total of 130 out of 200 relapse. Boy, this right here, just, just look at that. 49 car just ran Dale Jr. right up into the outside wall. That's Ron Horner, that Jr. in that car. He's just going by him on the outside. He's making a clean pass here. All of a sudden, the 49. Oh, I see what happened. The 49 got loose. Probably trying to get down out of his way. Trying to cut it to the bottom and jumped out from under. Sir Junior wasn't happy about that. After it bounces off the wall, Daryl, what is Junior concerned about? Oh, it, everything goes through your mind, and the car may not drive as well now. Because what happens? You knock the toe. When you hit the wall like that, you'll, you'll tow the right front end, and the car will not drive the same. One thing we may hear from his radio is, is his steering wheel straight. You can see a little damage to the right front fender. The steering wheel is that tells the driver what happened. If it's... And man, Jerry, Jeremy Mayfield. You won't believe how close Jerry came to getting wiped out in that deal. Jeremy Mayfield looks around to the caution flag. It'll be the seventh I hate to tonight. interrupt you, Larry, but golly. Oh, absolutely. That was big. Rusty Wallace and Brett Bodine in 11, and then the two, they got their lap back. I saw that 19 go around, and here comes, I thought Jarrett was definitely going to get taken out in the mess. Mayfield's car had been damaged from a crash much earlier. Watch this. 24. Watch this, Mike. Watch this, Larry. This is how close this cat comes to getting wiped out right here. We're riding with Jarrett. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Uh, oh, 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 my a whole lot the spotter could do for him. Uh, let me tell him. you, if Dale Jarrett hadn't drawn up, he wouldn't have made it. <laughs> I guarantee he grew up in the seat. And Jeremy, of course, was involved in an accident earlier back in the race, and he's out there 62 laps down. Once again, as we talked, just trying to make laps and accumulate points and gain positions. All right, we've been following Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, and Ricky Rudd on pit stops, and we'll take that same order again as they come down pit road at lap 258. Let's see if the pits are open. Caution is out. Ride with Jimmy Johnson and see why. Got the 23 car there in front of him. Hutch Strickland. Get off into the third turn here. Johnson, but I tell you, normally that car would have gone up, hit that outside retaining wall right in front of Jimmy Johnson. I mean, both those guys did no well of a job. job. Well of a job. And Strickland was the fifth place. Gordon gets under. Oh, got a car spinning off the corner down here. Mike Skinner. Everybody coming through the cloud of smoke. No caution. No caution. He's going to get the car back on the racetrack. Boy, these cars are coming out. About 10 cars coming out. Come on. Come on. And during all that, Mark Martin pulled away from 
Todd Kinson. That was three laps to go that time. A lot of traffic ahead, though. And the driver, same driver. And the driver. So, uh, we changed some stuff up to qualify. I mean, we were 35th in practice, and uh, you know, what the heck? We changed it up and see if it works. If it does, it does, don't, it don't. John Andrew did ready to spun out. Yeah, I noticed that. Good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sterling. Yeah, the driver said, <laughs> hey, Dick. <laughs> well, I just got a little, uh, I'll just tell Sterling this about his car. That car doesn't have any idea where it is. Well, that's true. The fellow won the ARCA race at Daytona one year. And he had an engine out of his little quarter mile dirt car. When he won it, he drove in, he was all amazed. And he said, that engine don't know where it is. No, it has no idea. But Watch here. this, guys. He he drove it down into turn three, and the car he got got down on apron just a little bit and it got loose right here and we thought it had it corrected but now watch this all of a sudden he's going to lose it again on in turn four how he ever hit anything didn't hit anything was a miracle well what happened was when he got up out of the groove it's dirty up there and the tires are hot enough now that he picked up enough uh, debris on the tires that when he tried to correct it and come on spun out with it that's one of the things i hate that I always hate about this joint you get out of that black stuff you see there that groove and get the little rubber and build up on your tires and you cannot drive your race car. But one nice thing about how they run on the bottom here, Daryl, is now you got a lot of room to slide that thing around and try to save it. You got time. Some if you got time you can do it. You saw that roof flap come up, I couldn't help but think one of the greatest sights. He's gonna be fourth quickest though, 23 oh. 37. And he's gonna be around. Oh, 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 oh. Pretty hard lick on the front end of that car. As Larry said at the top of the show, the straightaways here are banked nine degrees and gravity works. Self-cleaning racetrack. It's turn two. It's just coming up out of there and it, 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 I think that passed through the middle of the corner, Larry. Got back in the gas real quick. This goes to the bottom of the racetrack. Oh. Hard in the inside wall. And that, I think it just displays how, how free these cars are when, uh, when they're loose and out qualifying. That car didn't do anything. All of a sudden, it just came around. It happens that fast. Ooh, buddy, she just come waltzing up out of there, and around she went. He's driving to the garage area, but that has a backup car road all over it. Eighth place point man, Kurt Busch. Dick? I'm going to tell you what, do not write this guy off. If you were at this racetrack in September of year 2000 for the truck race. Turn three. Hard in the wall, Nima check. Around goes Todd Bodine. Looks like everyone else will make it through. And Jerry Nadeau in the 10 car, he's trying to get one of his laps back. So I believe he'll accomplish it here on the front stretch. Yeah, he'll get one of them back. Good job, Nadeau. He was right there where he could do that. Earlier, Bodine had had a side to side rubbing match with Mayfield. Yeah, I don't know. Down why. the back stretch. And yesterday, he and Jimmy Spencer got together in the Bush race. Yeah, they, we just saw an incident here with the 19 car. Riding with Bodine. I think this is the wreck here. Yeah, he just. Man, he just drove in there and shoved up into the 25. His former teammate, Nemechek. Exactly. Boy, he just, you know, Joe was going down on, out on the outside there, and uh, it'd have been good if Todd had to kind of give him a line. Looks like Todd was up out of the groove just a little bit. Todd's brother Brett just snuck past there, and uh, a little bit of fire there on Nemechek's car. That's right in the fuel cell area right there. I'm sure he's knocked the uh, filler neck off. And because of this all going on on pit road, they pretty much have pit road closed right now. This is the first of a six race deal for Travis Carter racing with Discover Card. Maybe a short day and Nemechek, it appears that, that his day is done. And what he's doing, he's dragging a lot of sheet metal and stuff here on the back of the car, obviously from where it's been in the fence and that's gonna ignite a little fire right there. You can see that filler neck just under the yellow of the, uh, of the decolate. That's where they put the fuel in. But fire crews quickly on the scene to put it out. And here's what Dale Earnhardt Jr. saw. 
Gosh, 26 car just really moved Buddy, up. Come on down, watch it. Over, come all the way down, all the way down. Hell of a job. That was a Dale Jr. spotter, Don Norris. Norris. Well, Bodine, Earl Johnson. Trouble. Turn two. Right in front of the leader. Martin didn't get it stopped. Could not stop. And ran into him. Probably nerve. That is incredible. How about that. How could he not get through there? It's unbelievable. I mean. How bad are you, pal? Pretty bad. Look at all the cars got back on the lead lap because of that. Michael, one of them. and couldn't, couldn't drive his car through this. Newman on the bottom, Park on the top, and they funnel oh, yeah. out Newman. of turn two. Newman just slides up into the one car. Now, this is all happening right in front of Mark. You'll see some cars go by on the outside of these two guys. But Mark just could not get stopped. I guess he was in a box. Larry, the 12 was out there, and he couldn't go high. The one's down low, and uh, he just was in a box. And I'm sure he was anticipating he, both these cars were going to slide. I mean, the, the straightaway's bank nine degrees. Home, everybody slides down. The wheels were locked up, Daryl. He, he just couldn't, couldn't make the cut to go between the them. Here he comes. You'd think the spotter by now would be telling him, slow down, slow down, slow down. Back it down. They're spinning in front of you. By now, he's almost stopped. It's almost like he thinks that he thought Park was going to keep going down the hill because that's normal here, but Park was going to slow, he, he couldn't. And just as Mark gets to Newman, his wheels lock up, and then you, lo you lose your steering when the brakes lock. I, I just think he, he was thinking that one car was going to keep right on down the track, because like I said, he was in, a, the 12 was there, he couldn't go high. Right. He was just in the wrong place. Dick Bergman's there. Now Mark Martin has been on the radio telling the crew, don't work too terribly hard on this thing. He doesn't want him to break it worse than it's broken already. He's taking a pretty good punch in the nose with this thing, Mike. Most important is when you heard that the water pressure is still there. That means that the radiator is not punctured. Right now, they're trying to get the nose of the car up off the ground, and they have succeeded to a degree in that. Uh, most of the crew working on the nose of the car right now. Let's go to bat as Mark leaves. And Dick, Jimmy Johnson came into the pits first, left in second after a 16 second pit road, but he's, he's cut a tire down. Yeah, he'll he's... make it to pit road. Caution is out. Caution is out. Yeah, he, that's a hard, that's a pretty good lick right there. Well, he's killed the right front. And it's another right front, I believe. I, I, I tell you something. Yeah, you got a lot of damage, but. Bobby Labonte in 18 car, he got his lap back, but what a tough break for people like Mike Skinner, Kyle Petty in particular, that already made their green flag stop. And this is what you hope for when you're staying out there that other lap or two, get somebody that else. caution at somebody else's expense. But I'm worried. That's the third right front I've seen in the last 10 or so laps go down. And our number two point man, Matt Kenseth, has gone to the garage. Tough day for Roush Racing. Mark Martin swept up in somebody else's crash, and look what happens to Matt Kenseth here. Going in, going into turn three. I mean, he was in there. That was a hard lick. When you hit just, the ball here, you hit it a ton. Just about the time he was going to turn into the corner, right front tire went down, and into the wall he goes. From Elliott Sadler. There he goes. Bam, right there. When you blow a right man. front Stay tire, baby, that yellow. hurts. It, it, you turn the wheel all you want, it's going to go straight. Picks up speed. Leaders are the pit road.
up pit road. He had an opening in front of him. Now we'll watch right here. This is coming down the back stretch at you, Daryl. Oh yeah, going into the third turn. You see the tires all coming apart. It's just flying all the pieces right there. And of course the driver can do nothing. The thing is just, it's pulling him right into the fence. Pretty good little shot he took going in there. Doesn't look that boy. I tell you, the leader's lucky he got by. Woo. Jimmy Johnson comes scooting by. There he goes. Whoa, Steve, Steve Grissom. Grissom was <laughs> just made it by in the 44. In tow. Dick Bergman. And I just was talking about John Andretti. He's on pit road. That's and a there's 25 car. Nemechek hard into the fence going into turn three. John Andretti had already begun his pit stop, and Kyle Petty is in as well. It's felt that some of the Dodgers don't get quite the mileage. If they hustle, the leaders in the short shoot, they can get their stop and beat these guys out. They'll be leading the race when these other guys, if they can beat these leaders off pit road. Sure. Speed down pit road, take the penalty, Here, but yeah. get out of there. Here the comes Gordon now. The 43 is going to make it. It's going to be a little tight on the 45. Remember the 55 miles an hour. There he goes. He's got to cross the line. He's He should be fine. Oh, no, I have to take that back. Remember what happened to Rusty Russell. Wallace? You've got to get down and pass the That's end of right. pit road. Kyle's a lap down. John Andretti's going to be okay. Kyle just went a lap down and Kyle should have, he should have speeded down pit road and taken the penalty, but instead he just maintained his pit road speed went a lap down. We had the situation here last year and it was Rusty very Wallace. questionable. Rusty Wallace was in the pits like he crossed the line ahead of the leader, but he did not get back out and into traffic before the leader went by and was adjudged to have gone down a lap. Meanwhile, Joe Nemechek's car sits badly wounded, the car that is, at turn three. Well, we talked about how fast that is across that short shoot at 180 miles an hour. I always wondered why cars got torn up so badly when they wrecked because I always thought, it's just that little old short shoot, you're not going that fast. Till we got the telemetry of these cars and saw exactly how fast you go across there, now you know why you can crash so hard right there. Car is, it has a lot of damage. That car, car hit hard. It was going around backwards and into the outside wall with a lot of speed. First caution of the day, Nemechek was in traffic going into turn three. Did not see if any other cars were involved. But it puts the caution out at lap 31 for the first time. There are your three leaders as they'll come around once pit road opens and come to pit lane for service. They're going to tiptoe through the accident scene here at turn three, and then pit road will be open. Here's here's just the tail end of it. That is a hard lick. You know what I like about that, though, is how the back end of that car folds up and absorbs those Dodge ran into the turn one wall. Yeah, it, he was going by uh, Robbie Gordon on the outside here. It, I don't think there was any contact. It just looks like Robbie held him out there and, and, and John had to make a real late entry into the corner and got up into loose stuff in the back end come around on it. That's put us under the third caution of the day at lap 115. And the leaders are on pit road. All 29 of them. On the Mike Skinner off the pace. Yeah, something happened over across the tunnel. Looks like the right side is going up. You know the thing about looking at Mark Martin there, the six car just a second ago, and see Mike Skinner trying to get to pit road is the fact other than Elliot Sadler, he ran the furthest of anybody in the earlier green flag run. And just remember, Elliot Sadler to 21, Mark Martin to six, both used Roush engines. Watch Mike Skinner here slide. Yeah, he got it up in the fence there. He just got in there a little hard over the tunnel. Lost the back end, slapped it up against the fence. It's pretty hard lick. He he makes it to pit road. Though. A lot of damage on that right side. I'd say possibly like Kurt Busch bent trailing arms, bent rear end housing. He's going to go straight to the garage area. Call on the Robbie's part. Got him back in row. Oh, there's the 28. It didn't make it. Yeah, he needed a caution, but he didn't intend on it being himself. It's left of the tire. They'll get the white flag this time by. We're still green, but I have to believe the caution will be thrown here. The car has stopped. Yeah, the caution and the white flag. So here's the race right here. Todd the 26. Uh, looks like his motor's expired. That's a Robert Yates engine. 
caution flag and the white Dale Jarrett eases off the gas and he'll just have to come around one slow lap to win it here in Corbin. Mark Martin comes across the line in second, Jimmy Johnson in third, Sterling Marlin will beat Jeff Gordon back to the line for fourth. Jeff Gordon fifth. Still got to make it about two more miles, guys. Yeah, because there's a car going down the back straightaway that's uh, putting out a lot of smoke. <laughs> Todd Bodine, there won't be a mosquito left in Pennsylvania when he's done. And he'll try to stay out there but complete all 200 laps. And there he goes. And that right rear tire was the problem. The right rear tire was just getting soft and it finally let go. He's going to be in 18th place. Uh, a solution right in the midst of green flag pit stops. I mean, we had so many cars that were so far behind the leader. All those that made green flag stops, they're definitely going to be a lap down. Here comes Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson's trying to get around our leader. I think he's going to make it. Yes, he did. To stay on the lead lap. To get, yeah, to get back on the lead lap. Yeah. Boy, that, I, that's the worst time in the world to have a caution flag. And Jimmy Johnson's 11th, so right now with that caution burning right in the middle of these green flag stops, we have 11 cars on the lead lap. There is the reason for the caution. As John Andretti got up and into the wall. Well, he got up there. Looks now, like he got some right, a little bit of like right side damage. Now, Darrell, the real problem, what we have two tenths left. It is Sadler in turn two. And the caution is out. Caution is out. But everyone on the lead lap has made their pit stop. So this should not change things up too much. Now here's a guy that is going to just going to really could pay off big time. It's not going to take long to clean this up. He just had come off pit road. They took no tires. Right, Darrell talked about it. Out. Jimmy Johnson, he didn't have those tires cleaned off after leaving the apron. I think you're probably right. But the guy that just played into his hand, this guy's got two fresh tires that nobody else does. And he's up to seventh place. This could be a big, big break for Bill Elliott. Winningest active driver here. And with Bill and with Elliot Sadler getting his car moving, this definitely I think will be a quickie caution. Yeah, we should get a couple laps. I've already seen debris or anything, so I think we're going to go right back to green. This track is so wide and has so many usable lanes that if you're, as we watch Elliot Sadler, let's see what happens here. He just come out. I think it's like we said. See, he's still up. I think he's still up in third gear. Yeah, he had not come to high gear yet. Exactly. He just got that debris all over his tires, trying to get out of the pits in a hurry. He's very lucky he didn't hit anything. It's a good thing this is a wide racetrack and a wide apron. Darrell, if you're Johnny Benson, Mark Martin, Kyle Petty, or Jeff Gordon on the back end of this lead lap. Part of the air package, and it's, it's not really hurting anything. Oh, that's a good run. It's, oh, no, it's not a good run. That's trouble. He's all right, though. He's not going to hit anything. Grab a gear. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Just the roof flat I was just going to say it was such a good run. It was blowing his skirt up, but then that happened. So I wouldn't say that now. This is Sadler's fourth attempt here, and his best previous start was 27. Oh, air that spin was at there. turn 10, and here he comes around to post. It's obviously the slowest time of the day, but he does post the time. 26. Look at it. Brandon uh, Ash here was a 79.6. He spun all the way around and did his D-Dido -di over there in the 83.2. A so, D-Dido? -di let's see that D-Dido. -di a D-Dido, -di yeah. That was, you've probably never seen one of those before. But that's just road course stuff. <laughs> I would say his entrance speed was way too high. Yes, it was, and a little bit of a heavy braking and the front end bit. Was There's that a, a little air a flap? Miscount. Was that a 360 or a 720? What was that? D -di those are always 360. Okay. Yeah. Matt. Well, Mike, Matt can. Dale Earnhardt Jr. spins and catches the tire wall. I think that happened because of what we saw in that congestion there a minute ago. Looked like he had a fender rubbing on the left front. Not so sure he doesn't have some serious damage to that car from that little collision he had earlier. Robbie Gordon and Mike Skinner go by. He was running in the 16th position the next time by. Mike Skinner was another car, along with Tony Stewart and Robbie Gordon, that took advantage and pitted that last time. So, Junior will go to pit road. Let's show you the spin. While battling Kyle Petty. Oh, he just gets the, the car gets so unbalanced with him, it goes off the track and starts bouncing when it comes around there's nothing he can do with it the nice thing about hitting the tire wall Darrell, is you don't hit it very hard the bad thing is it snaps the car right around because it sucks in and then shoves the car back out usually just does a lot of cosmetic damage you can see right there he heard the car bottom out and it just couldn't do anything with it Let's see it from overhead it 
See, Junior was actually in the right spot for making the pass, but Kyle forced him up on the rumble strips. The car bottomed out and around she came. He's done some damage to the left front, but he's back out. You'll be fine. We'll be able to this place. With 15 Winston Cup teams that started today's race, but he's looking for a success of his own. Forrest, trouble. He is spinning. He fires it back up. Now he's got to find a break in traffic to get back onto the track. That's down to turn four. What he did is he got off over that hump that we were talking about, that speed bump there, and he got out there a little too far and he came around there, but it felt like I could hurt anything. Boy, John Andretti throwing the 43 just slipped by on the outside. He had that he had that fender damage earlier. He got that early in the race. He's coming down the hill here. This is a fast part of the course. John Andretti looking inside. More likely Boris has noticed. Yeah, he just didn't didn't give him, uh, John any room. John touched him. Look how far out John is in the 43 car. Whoa. Barely cleared. Yep. Now, if Boris had been really mad, he might have let that thing roll right back there a little faster than he did. But I think he probably knew that John was there. You can see John's got position. Boris hopes that he doesn't touch. John slides through. And Boris's teammate Blaney, the all yellow car, just sneaks through here. Now, what were you saying about Boris? <laughs> he do at turn 10. I think he's going to hang on to it. A 720, a double spin, and away he goes. Yeah, he was running in, uh, he was in the top 10. Caution is 10. out. Yeah. Caution is out. He was 10. Great save. <laughs> John Andretti has come to the pits as the caution comes out. I think that's a good, I think it's a good move. If he got in, if he got on pit road before that caution flag came out, that's a good move. Yeah, and what tells him whether he can or not is the man at the entrance of pit road waving the red flag, the green flag. Matt Yoakum. 97. 97. Well, Larry, this is not Matt Yoakum, this is Hammond, but he did beat him on pit road right there. He was coming in for a scheduled pit stop, and when the caution came out, John Andretti was already making the turn coming down pit road here, so he's going to get himself a freebie. The fellow who owned, whose family owns that car, Richard Petty, has long said, I'd rather be lucky than good any day. Just John John Andretti was just both. He just used up a bunch of it right here because he's on pit road at the right time. And this is what Larry was talking about in the opening. When they do, just <laughs> you can tell he's done some off-road racing. <laughs> you, you have to give credit to John Andretti's spotter, crew chief, Two out of the last three weeks, they have made a timely trip to Pit Road Pocono. Two weeks ago, they did the same thing. That's exactly right. It may do credit for a 720. It was but a 360, but it, <laughs> it sure was impressive. It was very nice. Nice save. Well, this was. Whoa, around goes Todd Bodine, who was the race leader. He and John Andretti did not stop under the caution. Andretti had just stopped, so Todd Bodine too hot into turn 11, and he goes around. And we're pretty sure Todd Bodine had not pitted. That's how he assumed the lead. What he was going to do is run just a few more laps, come in under green, then he could make it to the end without stopping. His older brother, Brett, led during the caution period and came to pit road as we went to green to be assured of being able to go the distance without another pit stop. I think he was looking back right here. He sees John take a look to the inside. And he just got too much rear brake. And what you have to remember, he was out there on much older tires, older tires. than the rest of these drivers were. And he's letting those guys carry him down in there a little too fast. You hear the rear tires? You hear that thing wheel hop, Larry? Bum, 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 bum. Yep. This has a lot of rear brake in that car. Now you saw the yellow flag waving. That is just a local yellow for that part of the track. Turn 11 means no passing till you get. That's what you've got to have. Oh, the 45 round Kyle Petty. You got to have good pit strategy on these road courses. That's the key to winning one of them. Kyle Petty was 18th before that spin. He'll still be on the lead lap as he comes back on track. And I tell you guys, we still have a long way to go, but based on that first green flag run, now he's marked way back in 22nd position. The only car we keep hearing our pit guys talk about all these guys short. Spectacular. Whoa, hard hard, yeah, hard, 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 hard yeah. contact. Caution is out. Yeah. A hard crash for Boris said, and this will certainly help the drivers who could not go the distance on fuel. And his Jasper number 67, it's pretty take wrecked. The garage, take it to the garage. 
Well, we told you that Boris would be spectacular. Checker or wrecker? He, he is. He's a spectacular driver to watch. That's trying right. to make up some ground. Made it into the tire wall at turn 10. And I mean, obviously, this caution helps everybody that could not make it to the end. Just gets in there. Turn Way 10. Hot. That's the most deceiving turn on this racetrack. You just you don't realize how fast you're going. And when you do realize it and you start to try to slow the car down with the brakes, off the track it goes. And it's flat. There's absolute no bank in the hole. It's Dave Blaney in trouble down at turn 11. Yeah, he's going to lose a lot of positions. Have been running up in the top 10 or 12 for most of the day. He's going to go all the way to the back of the pack. Boy, that's too bad. He's doing a great job. But it happens here. You get a caution. You get these restarts. And the hairpin. It's a bright yellow car. Just gets a little push. Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman got a win. push. And now Casey Atwood's problem. Difference in it's that's old old tires, new tires. Right, Bobby exactly. Lamonti had new tires. And then he, he, he just can't go and you get run over. Look at this view here. I mean, the, the half the field's coming at him. Moments ago at turn 11. 55 of Bobby Hamilton. He just locks it up. It's late in the race here, Larry. Your front brake pads are starting to wear down quite a bit. Get a little bit too much rear brake. Wheel hop a little and around she goes. And, and Daryl, you know, Mike talk. He's living large, that's for sure. It'll be five laps to go this time as Brett Bodine goes off course. The Hooters Ford. Everybody's getting anxious now. Five laps to go. They're stepping the aggressive meter up just a little bit. Your brakes are worn out for the most part. You've been using a lot of brake. Transmissions are not quite as good as they were early in the day, and your tires are gone. We'll show you Brett Bodine's spin. As from 5.4, Jerry Nadeau's line, has, or lead has now gone to 4.9 seconds. But he only chopped four tenths of a second that time, and that's not going to do it with five laps to go. Five Absolutely, but only four and a half seconds now. Here's what happened to Michael Walter at turn four. See, it's just, here it, it's, you're locking up the rear wheels and, and wheel hopping because your front brake pads are worn out. You own old tires, your crew saying three to go, four to go, five to go, we got to go. Twenty-nine cars still on the lead lap. See now, but it's hard. There's a car up high going into turn three. Wall behind you. It's Johnny Benson. Boy, Benson. stay up there. Stay up there. Hold it up there. Can't. Don't come down. Everybody gets. Oh through. man. Got another I'm car smoking coming off the corner You're here. Okay. Caution waving as they come to the line. And the car that's smoking Kenny is Schrader. Kenny Schrader, Benson's teammate. The 36 car. Yeah, that's a, oil, I think it looks like an oil leak on Schrader's car, like an oil line. The oil pressure is still good. Oil pressure is still good. He's got Something an oil line. Something came off Johnny's car when he had problems. Something came off of Benson's car, he says, and must have punctured an oil line. Now, I, I believe all of this havoc we're having here, this mayhem, is because we've had no practice. These cars have not been on the racetrack together like this all weekend long. And NASCAR, they, they're going to give these guys a caution after they run about 20 or 25 laps to adjust their car. But right now, we're only getting about two or three green laps of running. Did, did you call the driver and tell him that? <laughs> because they don't <laughs> act like it. <laughs> but how ironic and how unpredictable in this race that teammates go out in the same corner. Benson in the wall, piece off his car, hits his teammate Schrader. Guess what happened here in February? Piece off of Michael's car. Oh, he got, he looked like he got turned. That's Johnny Benson up against the wall. In February here, a piece off of Michael's car cut down Dale Jr.'s right front tire, teammates. That looked like, I'm not so sure he didn't get some help getting up there like that, Larry. Yeah, there, there, there you saw the Schrader on the bottom, and there's Johnny Benson. Of course, just been back two or three races after being injured back at Richmond in a Bush Series race. And broke a couple of ribs when he hit the turn three wall at Richmond. And going into the third turn there and get a little, get hooked though, like he did and turned up into the wall, that's going to hurt. He's stunned. Let's have another look here. Yeah, they're coming down the back here. There, there's Benson right there in the 10 car. He yeah. moved up. No, nah, he didn't move up. Whoever the that car right there got into his that, right rear. That car moved down. I don't know why, but uh, something caused that car, the outside car, to move down. That's kind of hard to tell who that was. But somebody clipped him in the right rear. 
So Benson, who led a number of laps in the Daytona 500 and might have won it, one of several drivers who had a chance to win, is out early tonight. That's, that's the same look he had when he got out of the car. We have about three or four packs out there. What's different from here from Talladega? Handling is more of a characteristic here. It's more of the package. Your car has to drive good. Turn four, car hard in the wall, Kenny Wallace. Caution is out. Where's Jeff Gordon? Trying to get back on the lead lap, no doubt. Caution out, leaders in turn two. Now the leaders will not race one another, so here comes Gordon trying to bust his way through traffic. And how these cars qualified, they were the top five finishers from Lowe's Motor Speedway back in May. Tony, Tony Stewart. Stewart. 20 car has more problems on the back stretch. We stay green so far. A spin off turn two onto that paved apron area and a lot of smoke from Stewart's car. Caution will come out for the sixth time tonight. Boy, Tony Stewart's poor old car looks like it's been a demolition derby. Stewart, who had fought his way up to fifth in the points after being the first car out of the Daytona 500, brought out, was involved in the first caution of the night at lap two, and now he brings out the sixth yellow flag. I don't know if Gordon is, uh, he's not in a position to get a lap back, is he? No, he lost a lot of ground uh, right before that stop and on the pit stop itself. Elliot Sadler trying to get a lap back short by two car lengths. The Wood Brothers who lead all car owners with 12 victories in this race. The Petties have 11. Hendrick Motorsports seven and Elliot just shy of beating back, leader buddy, Michael Waltrip to the line. That would have been big for him because the only one lap down that put him back on the lead lap. See what happened to Tony Stewart. Oh he just. Thing gets loose on him, starts coming around, coming around, and spins it down on the apron. She just gets loose. Here she comes. You see all that paved area there, Mike? Larry, that didn't used to be there. It used to be grass. And if that had a, when it was grass, you'd flip over every time you got down in there. And what we have to remember, the, all the repairs they've done to that race car, I mean, that can definitely change the handling oh, yeah. of how that car drives. A long, tough night. For Tony Stewart. Mike Gordon in 32nd place. One lap. Whoa, there, there you go. There you Jared. go. This is it, guys. Jared Nemechek, Jeff Burton, Mike Skinner. It's Good over. Car hard up into the wall, joined by another. And they just keep wrecking. And the hits keep on coming. And the big hit was Joe Nemechek, Brett Bodine on fire. Leaders will have to race back to the caution flag. Here comes, I think this is Sadler again. It is Elliott Sadler. Yeah, but here comes Gordon back. Back, right back here behind him. Yeah, they're off the 24 four. car right there. He's trying to get his lap back as well. Elliott Sadler looks like he will accomplish it. Jeff Gordon will not. And I don't think Michael Waltram, you mentioned it, Darrell, had a problem giving that 21 car lap back. No, not going to give that 24 car. Dale Jarrett is moving around inside the number 88. He's going to climb out. Todd Bodine is out. Uh, rather Brett Bodine he owns that car in that race team and of that number 11 there is little left Matt Kenseth is involved heavy nose damage but I'm worried about Joe Nemechek that car hit the turn one wall with tremendous force there's Mike Skinner that's Dale Jarrett Jarrett's out and he's looking over the car and there's Martha, Martha. Nemechek Joe's mom Last night Martha was celebrating Joe's victory. Tonight she's in tears. I don't know whoever got down the apron got turned. Mike Skinner has come to rest. Had a good run going there. See Bobby Labonte. All kinds of damage to that car. And Brett Bodine's out of that car. And the good news about the Joe Nemechek car was they were attending to the car, not to the driver's compartment. So we can presume from that that Joe's okay. And here's Mike Skinner moving around. And the face of Martha Nemechek, remember she lost a son in a race car crash at Homestead, Miami, lost her younger son, John. But the window net is down on Joe Nemechek's number 25. And 
That's yeah. always a sign that he's a, we believe he's gotten out of the car. We'll await confirmation. Joni Macek is out of the car. Brett Bodine is out of his car. The wings will be extra crispy tonight. This starts by somebody getting crowded down on the apron here. Oh, Dale Jarrett. Dale Jarrett goes Gets down bumped. in like front of the 21 car, wasn't it? Oh, no, Jeff that Burton. was the 99 car. Oh, man. You're right, Mike. Nemechek took a hard lick. Then the four car. Saw the lick that Brett Bodine and Levin took there in front of Joe Nemechek. Steve Park. Look at Blaney in the 77 all the way down on apron along with Jimmy Johnson Jimmy in the Johnson. 48 as well. Nemechek gets hit once and then straight oh. up and into the wall. The drivers call it the big one. And Daryl, I think we've accepted it's somewhat inevitable in this type of race. Let's we'll see if Jeff Gordon gets through this. Yeah, he got through. He tried to get his lap back, but uh, Dale Jarrett's going to pay the price here. The 99 gets a run on him, and he tries to block him. The 99 got into him. And the rest. Just look at the cars through his windshield. You just wonder, is it ever going to quit hitting? Mike, I've seen this. I, 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 I've seen these things so many times that I just I had that, as I just said, I had that feeling that we saw it, it, it was coming. Dale Jarrett walking back from turn one. I'm sure Dale is uh, quite dejected. He had a great car. He had a top five car, certainly. Had a top five car, and... Uh, Jared a wave to the crowd. I believe he waved off a ride in the ambulance earlier. <laughs> they will insist that he goes to the care center. Uh, it's kind of mandatory, right? I think right now he just wants to walk back to the pits by himself. Yep. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, you know he's he's probably a little upset with himself. Here's Brett Bodine who is okay. A little water there. Uh, it's another truck Dale doesn't want to drive. Well, it's a, what happens here is, you know, uh, Burton had a run on the 88, and the 88 tried to block him, and they came together, and when they did, it just uh, it started this. Jimmy Spencer cut left, and I think he missed it. Just barely. Perry because Labonte there. Nemechek came straight up the track in front of Spencer's 41, and so did Skinner. Look at Ricky Rudd in the 28 car. He's going to go to the bottom of the racetrack and just barely get by wow. Jeff Burton. See, these cars will go up and down. They, get, they start at the bottom. They go up, hit the wall. They'll come down, and sometimes they'll go right back up. That's why it's so hard to miss a wreck here. There's just no way that the cars will stay in one spot. Jimmy Johnson creeping through. This is coming to the start-finish line. You see the 99 drop down to the inside. Got a run on Jarrett. Starts to look to the inside. I, I, it's kind of hard to say what happened there. Uh, it looked like Dale tried to block him, moved down a little bit, and when he did, they come together. Not so Boy, sure. that lick again by Joe Nemechek. That's, that was a hard lick. Well, and, so was the 11 car. I yeah. mean, those two cars really, they cracked that wall hard. It was like Skinner was a croquet ball and just sent Brett Bodine into the wall. Saw Steve Park in the one car involved as well. This next replay in real time. Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 all the way out in the grass. Folks, I've been in these things, and I tell you, 
TV just we just can't do the M we just can't do it justice as to what that feels like. The caution is out at Daytona International Speedway for this grinding crash with 21 laps to go. Welcome back live on Fox, the Pepsi 400. At least 14 cars involved in the crash. Every driver is okay at this point. No serious injury, including Dale Jarrett in the 88 car who walked back, and it was a long walk because an ambulance did not appear in the, uh, in the amount of time in which he got out of his car. More on the accident. In fact, let's get a check uh, with uh, Dale Jarrett and our Matt Yoakum is standing by. Matt? And Dale Jarrett has finally walked back to his pit here at the head of pit road. And DJ, first off, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, just uh, unfortunate, man. We had a really good car, and uh, I was just, I don't know, maybe it's my fault. I don't know. I was just trying to take my position and get by Mark there and uh, got hit in the back. And uh, I guess that's just part of this kind of racing. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't make it through the night. Things happen so fast here, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, you know, you have a caution there at the end, and... You know, it kind of bunches everybody up and everybody gets racy and, uh, you know, just a lot of things are going to happen there. So uh, it's unfortunate. Again, we had a really good race car and I uh, thought we might have a shot to run the top five. I don't know if we could do anything with Michael and, and uh, Junior there, but uh, just didn't quite make it. Now you had the long stroll back, which got all the fans up on their feet. Why the walk back instead of the ambulance? It wasn't an ambulance. came and picked me up until I'd walked halfway here. So if they can't get there any faster than that, I can get here on my own. Good news is Dale Jarrett's okay. All right, he might have driven the, the big brown truck faster than the ambulance got there, too. These are the drivers involved in the crash at this point, officially those that we have checked. Remember, last night, there were 15 cars involved in the Bush race, and at uh, Talladega, uh, there were uh, 24 cars involved in the big one there, as the drivers refer to the wreck. 24 cars involved in, in that wreck uh, with uh, Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers. Back. There's another car about you, baby. Cars are all over the place again. Ryan, Ryan Newman, Newman, 12 car. Dave Blaney in the 77 as well. And they're racing back to the caution. And this could be the race. And here comes Sterling making a run. They'll come to the flag with three to go. Michael Waltrip leading them home. Rusty Wallace looking for his first Daytona win. Here they come to the caution flag. And this could be the race. I don't know there'd be enough time to throw a red flag. As we have three laps to go, caution flies. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. Comes across in sixth outside of Mark Martin. Boy, that was some. <laughs> that, was, that was some. In the back modern debris. That's a shame. Dave Blaney had a great car all night long. Well, they almost wrecked them all going down into turn one. Got over into turn two over there. A car spun and collected these other cars. It was Ryan Newman, the rookie who went sideways in the back stretch, and there the track crews are talking to Ryan trying to help him out. Like you said Mike there's no way we can stop this race. You'd have to stop it right now and there's no way to do that. Jeff Green based on what I've seen I, I, I would be ill advised if they did. There's Newman out of the car. Taking off the uh, support. The Hutchins device. We are hearing that they will not throw a red flag. They'll be coming to two to go. So this race is going to end under caution. Look, it was Todd and Jeff Bodine, Here the two come. brothers right there. This is, there they go. Now it looks like they're going to wreck here. They save it. That's Newman outside them, I believe. Come down into. I think Daryl looks like Ryan Newman had a tire yeah. smoking. I yeah. think he had a here tire go, go down. Here's right a good there. shot. He, I think that the, here you go. They get into it right there. That's going to cut down a tire. I guarantee you, left rear tire. They go off in the corner. You're going to see a little smoke here now, I believe. See yes, the there it is. There it is. A left side tire going that down. That thing's going to blow the left rear tire and it's going to spin off the corner over here. There it goes. Caught the side of the saddle. 21. There went the 29. Oh, that 19 just squeezed through. There's a lot of cars that just squeezed by right there. Of course, Dave Blaney, the 77's one that did not. And you can not. see that the left rear tire is down and off the wheel. That's what made him come around right there. He gets into the side of Elliott Sadler, the 21. Looks like, you see, the tire lets go completely right here, and it comes around then. Let's ride with Jeremy Mayfield. That's Newman right in front of him. 
He's got to see the smoke, and that's just a, he doesn't. Now he sees him spin. Can't see anything right there. Squeezes by. If you can see the other side of his car, that was close. Because you just don't know which way he's going to go up there as he come up on the back stretch. And all season long, and right here especially, I've got to give an attaboy to our cameramen, our tape operators, our replay producers for being able to share all of these images with you instead of all of us. Stretch the 22 around in traffic. Warburton sitting sideways right across the trioval by the start finish line, but everybody gets by. Caution flag is out. And how did they miss him? And you know, Dave Blaney might get a break, and he just might. Come on, speed, speed, Dave. Speed. Let's well, see if he's going to be stopped. Question is. Oh, he nope. made it. Got the go. Go ahead, Ryan Newman. And that Jasper team that Blaney drives for, they get their engines, they're all they're all in on that engine operation, so maybe there's a little teamwork there with Newman backing off to let Blaney get going. Just what looking at the 22 he's got a flat, looks like maybe he's got a flat right rear tire. Left front tire's flat. Well, I guess all of them are flat after that yeah, spin. Yeah, after the spin. So we only got a couple laps in before the caution flag came out, four to be specific, under yellow in the Tropicana 400. Never see Ward Burton coming down pit road once again to make some adjustments to the cat car. And we take a look at what happened to bring out the yellow and put Ward He's crossways on the racetrack. There. Really hard to tell. Hard to tell if it was contact, what might have caused it. There probably was. On board with Jimmy Spencer. And all of a sudden Spencer sees a lot of smoke and a spinning car in front of him. Now, there is some damage there on the front of the 22, which definitely is not going to help his day. Also, it looked like Jeff Green's car was damaged in that as well. It looked like the left rear of his car has some damage. Aerodynamics, real important here, Benny, especially what they're working on, that left front fender. Yes, left front fender is so critical to all these racetracks. We see the NASCAR officials giving all the crew signal. One lap to go. The cars come by this time. Next time by, they'll go green flag. So they're trying to get some tape something over that gap in that left front fender to help the downforce. I think they need more of the tape, don't yeah, you? Do. Get the rivet gun out. Here's our Circuit City track fact. Chicagoland Speedway now in its second season of operation. Coming on to pit road. Michael Waltrip missed it. Terry did too. No caution. Is he stalled? Or no? Well, that's what they're waiting to find out. There he goes. And he'll stay on the green. A lot of guys are happy about that because they're half the field would have went down the lap. Yeah, that, that yellow one came, came out, out right there. If the caution comes out before the rest of the lead cars kit, some guys are going to be in trouble. And Jim Long told me this morning that if this became a fuel mileage race, that Terry Labonte would be awfully good. Unfortunately, that spin on pit road took away the advantage that he had. Spin coming on the pit road. That so this will be a four-tire change for Terry Labonte. They made a significant wedge adjustment. He says his car was loose. Jerry Nader was in. Also, Kenny Wallace is in for a pit stop, waiting on Hutch Strickland. And, uh, you know, they came to me and explained uh, what had happened and, and why it won't happen again. Uh, you know, they didn't feel unsatisfied with that. It was an unfortunate situation. The good thing was I wasn't hurt, and, uh, you know, nothing came from it other than we're going to have better communication now. And as we've heard throughout this weekend, and uh, now, Alan, I know you talked to uh, some of the NASCAR officials that it was a miscommunication that some of the rescue vehicles didn't go to the assigned spot. Matt? No one car, Steve Park, is already in for service. Left side tires going down. Park complaining. His car was extremely tight in the center of the corner. They adjusted with track bar and air pressure. Well, Steve Park had some trouble getting on to pit road. This is the third time today we've seen this. And now we see the yellow car park slowing down to get on pit road. And there's so much debris there that he had, gets loose as he hit, hits the apron of the racetrack. And around he goes, almost backs up to the racetrack, but finally stops it. Goes on to pit road, makes a stop, and away he goes. But didn't give his lap back now. Yeah, no out of bounds here. That was clearly discussed in the driver's meeting this morning. But uh, it, it's kind of a risky proposition, isn't it? Obviously. <laughs> 
I tell you one thing, that was one, he drove that baby. That was one fantastic drive. He drove it for a mile, yep. but it finally got away from him. Sixth caution flag. Boy, that's down the back stretch. I think Hutch Trickland's fender is rubbing a tire that's causing all that smoke. And Jimmy Spencer, I think, caused a lot of it. All right, let's go back and see what happened. Started off of turn four, coming down the front stretch. And here you got Harvick, takes a big run on Kurt Busch. Now he's down on the apron, but the, he tries to squeeze back up, hits Kurt Busch, and I mean drives this car forever, like you said, BP. Wait, I don't think he, I don't think he hit Kurt Busch, but watch, it's when he makes the transition from the flat back onto the banking. I think that's when the car got upset, right there. It got angry anyway. Yep. And here he goes. Now, you know he's not going to be able to handle it on the apron of the racetrack. The bank is, the banking on the racetrack is only 18 degrees, so it's probably at 6 degrees on the apron there. And he finally loops it. Meanwhile, behind, these guys start trying to avoid the accident and run into each other. Too bad for these fellows. Boy. On board, Elliott Sadler. That's Hart Strickland just ahead of him. Okay, add, add him to the list of those involved. I missed that. <laughs> yeah, me too. The speed he's running. It's not going to take off. Oh! Joe Nemechek. Caution is out. Oh, man. A race-changing or race-saving. In some guy's case, yellow flag is out. Tony Stewart. Joe looks like he's got a left front flag. He definitely has a left front flag. We saw him make contact with the... Now, can Ryan Newman get in, get the tire change, and get back on the racetrack? Was yeah. the caution flag out when he entered, so he'll have to go to the end of the line because he pitted too soon. Two rounds in, right rear. Leader Tony Stewart has given him a big break because he's way off the pace on the backstretch. Well, the pace car is sitting on the backstretch and did not pick him up. Marty! The car couldn't catch him. Wow, I didn't know if a gun was going off or what, but the tire blew right as he came to his pit stall. That's... Uh, what I call time management. It lasted all the way here, and it was the right front tire. They will make a, a chassis adjustment. He was tight on that last run, and uh, he did pit before everybody else. I do not believe pit road was open, so Ryan Newman has four fresh tires and a chassis adjustment. But he did manage to stay on the lead lap. Tony Stewart was by the start finish line, but he had not gotten to the cutoff point on pit road before Ryan Newman left, so he will be able to, to stay in the lead lap. But pit road was not open because the pace car didn't lead the field by the opening to the pit lane. You never see Joe Nemechek. And I watched Joe earlier, and he had some problems earlier before that time. And I don't know if he had a tire going down, but this last time definitely left front tire went down. Let's we'll see. Watch Joe going down into turn one here, and you can see the car got real loose on him. Got up in the marbles. There again, the wall. Left one is flat now. I don't yeah. know. And, and I think that's what it was when he yeah. went down in there. So he, he had a left front flat tire. Now the, the 77. It's been so long that Skinner got all excited. Oh, the lady sideways. That's three of them. Oh, and everybody gets by. Laney went in and tried to use that inside lane underneath Skinner going into three, and it looked like the car didn't stick. Okay, question asked, question answered. Yes, sir. It's going to be tough down in that bottom lane. Early caution here in the New England 300 presented by Stacker 2. Dane Blaney crashed in turn three. Didn't take long for the first caution flag to wave in the New England 300. Mike Skinner, Dave Blaney racing for third into turn number three. All right, let's take a look. There we see we said that the yellow 77 car. They go down in the corner on the inside. Skinner in the four car. Blaney just it's just too flat down there. We thought maybe they'd be able to use it. He spins up. The 12 of Ryan Newman, the 17 of Matt Kenseth. Both of those cars do not make contact, but do lose a lot of track position. Almost looked like from the way Skinner ran into that turn that he was expecting Blaney to go below that first broken line and use that inside lane, and Blaney didn't want to. No, he didn't want to. He was hoping that Skinner would go up the racetrack and give him a little bit more room. Did not happen, but again, Skinner was in the groove. Blaney was trying to make the pass. And I tell you what, he made some pretty good contact with the outside retaining wall. Yep. And Stewart had a little problem. 
There, oh man, he's sideways back in the middle of the corner. He did some serious steering, but he never could quite get caught up. And around he goes, man, he nails the gas, trying to make the thing do a 360. Finally says, whoops, I better try to stop this thing. And slams on the brakes and roof flaps come up and try to keep the car on the ground and the fence is coming and... Uh, but he doesn't hit anything. Everything's okay. Yep. And his heart goes, ka -choo, ka -choo, ka -choo. <laughs> Come, Just be smooth and put the brake fans on. Trouble in turn one, Dave. Joe Nemechek, caution's out. Is he going to get it started? Better hurry. There comes the leader. And... No. Oh, he's got a lot of damage. Yeah. He's... Oh, that's wow. why. He... Got it started. But serious damage on the left rear. The cars don't work real well on three tires only. I don't think even if he gets started, he's going to go anywhere. Third caution of the race already, just 30 laps in. The first one for Dave Blaney spinning, racing for third at lap three. Then Jimmy Spencer spinning on the back stretch at lap number 20. Now another 10 laps later. Big trouble here for Lakeland, Florida native Joe Nemechek. I wish I had been wrong. Yeah, when you said that we were going to yeah. make a lot of fenders up. <laughs> yeah, wish I'd have been wrong. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. We're just underway here in New Hampshire. Rusty Wallace is your leader. A little bit of a rough and rugged start to the New England 300 presented by Stacker 2 at the New Hampshire International Speedway. Third caution of the race, just 30 laps in. This one when Joe Nemechek got turned into the wall in turn number one. Based on where he hit the wall, Looks like he may have got a little help there, Benny. Yeah, it looks that way. Let's see. We saw Nemechek get out of the car, and he's standing by the fence just before he gets in the ambulance. But he, well, let me go. Okay, well, based on that reaction, I think you probably got a little he's help. He's saying to someone, <laughs> please use your head. But I don't know who that was. Believe Bobby Labonte got the nose of his car damaged in the backup. He was behind the guy that was behind Nemechek. Wait. Oh, that left front tire is. And so while they clean up the mess down inside turn one, let's... Uh... Oh, wow. He, the accordion did get him. That could mess up your aerodynamics. Let's take a break while they're... Uh, it looks like Elliot Sadler spun and kept going and didn't hit anything, but the caution is out for uh, fourth time in the race. Well, there goes Elliot around the racetrack. And you're right, if he spun, he definitely kept on going I believe it was up in turn four where he looped around and so yellow flag once again let's take a look at what happened from Elliot Sadler's perspective well okay there we see him on the outside of Robbie Gordon and you're right he does a 360 Steve Grissom goes by Whoa. Brett Bodine takes evasive action on board with listen <laughs> that was the one that almost got him. <laughs> hey, remember last week, Discover Card countdown to the green from Casey Atwood and John Andretti. And those two cars look like they're welded together as I look down on them. <laughs> okay, Andretti is moving. Oh, get out of the way. Yeah, don't race to the yellow now. Look at this, right in front of the leader. <laughs> Bill Elliott gets a lap back. and Okay, now, Casey, you can move. Yikes. But he has lost a lap. John Andretti, the 43 Cheerios car, did not lose a lap. But some pretty serious damage to the seven car looks like. Yeah, that's that's pretty serious. Yes, it is. Both right side tires are flat. It's been a lousy weekend for John Andretti. Fastest car in Friday practice. Got up out of the groove in his qualifying lap. A lot of damage in the left front as well. And that's why. I see. Turned sideways right in front of John Andretti. And they kind of got hooked together. Nice job, Brett Bodine and Ward Burton to get stopped. Let's see if we can. Yeah. So Andretti's got to have some pretty serious damage to his car because he made pretty good damage that left pretty good contact with that left front on Casey Atwood's car. Wow. 
John Andretti and Casey Atwood bring out caution number five. Hoping they're for their first one today. Dave. Marty. Jimmy Johnson. Uh oh, Kyle's into the wall. And he just got out of the groove like we've seen, Benny. And, and as soon as you get out of the groove, it's just like hitting ice. Caution flag is out. And that's exactly what happened. He got outside the groove about two feet, and it would not turn at all. Man, what a bad break. Just finished saying what a great run he was having. Sixth caution flag of the race just past one-third distance. And it looks like... Uh, it looks like you have no margin for error. Well, and, and there's nothing you can today. do when you get in it. You just get off the throttle. You can't hit the brake because you hit the brake. That'll make it worse. So you're just kind of backpedal a little bit. We'll, we'll watch again what happens to, to Kyle. But there's just nothing a driver can do except wait it out. Here he, he gets high. He gets up in those marbles. Now he's just getting off the throttle. He's trying to turn it. But there's just no way. When those hot Goodyears get all that dirt and rubber on it, you're along for the ride. As a matter of fact, as we look again, and we see him coming off the corner from a camera in the pits, will not turn. All right, should see all the leaders in here. They last pitted at lap 60. We're going to be completing. Another one bites dust, same exact thing as everybody else. Exactly like Kyle Petty. If we could have drawn up, just drew a map of Kyle Petty, it would be exactly the same thing with Tony Stewart. Fifth place driver in the championship. Was racing in the top five, and off he went. Now we see the top three, top four, five, six, seven, eight. And Tony Stewart has tried to drive the car back to the pits, but he would not drive properly, and uh, he's in the dirt and angry. Yeah. The angry probably was before the in the dirt thing, though. Stewart, after having problems that included dropping out in the opening laps of the Daytona 500 clawed his way all the way back into the top five in points again we sound like a broken record here but I'm telling you what this groove is so narrow and when you get into those marbles with these hot tires there's just nothing you can do and everybody seems to be hitting it about the same spot Benny yep. let's see well there's a black mark where's Kyle Petty's black mark I think it's on this way right there's where Kyle hit the wall before one more shot all you got to do is you get the right sides outside those white dots that white line it will not turn all right who's on pit road who's going to stop so tony out of his car and okay just the race leader it looks like Jer it's happened again flagman's had to pull that yellow out and wave it over the new hampshire international speedway ninth one of this race and i think we can look at the back of the penzoil uh, chevrolet and figure out that what might have happened to cause him to spin. Looks like someone ran in the back of Paul Steve Park, big time. Well, let's check it out. There we see him coming off the corner. Now BP, he just did what everybody else is doing. Got that right front up in the marbles and, and the wall ran into the back yeah, of that car. The, the wall ran in the back of the car, I see. What Schrader call that, the slide for life? Oh, Kurt Busch just gets by. Steve Grissom. Slid a little sideways. And we got Michael Walker in trouble right there. And Terry Labonte down at the bottom of the racetrack also stopped in that incident. Well, Kurt Busch gets a lap back, so now he's only three down. Michael is fired up and continued on away. This is caution number 10. By the way, the record for most cautions in a Winston Cup race in New Hampshire, I'm sure that was going to pop into your head soon. It had already, but <laughs> go ahead. 17. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so we got a ways to go before we catch it. But 10 and two-thirds of the race, the possibilities exist. You know, here we are on lap 199. I'm not too sure that anyone can make it from here on fuel. Be Someone might it. try it. Yeah. They would be stretching it. Yeah, they might have to try it. Some guys will. Trouble off turn four. Caution is out. Michael Waltrip. Twelfth yellow flag. I told you we had time to get to that record of 17. Still got 58 laps to go. And Kurt Busch got a lap back. Bill Elliott got a lap back. 
Phil Elliott's got a lot of lap back, it seems like. Is that, is that three now? I think that he's got three laps back. Should be his fourth one fourth that he'll get back. back. He yeah. was 13 down. This is going to leave him rusty down. Trouble turn four. Ricky Craven. And no caution yet. It doesn't look like there's going to be one. Well, that hurts some guys track position. They are checking turn four. They say the track is clear. As a uh, monitor of the NASCAR officials radio communications, we will stay under green. Now, Jeff went down pit road, obviously not pit road speed, but I think they'll let him have that one because he was trying to avoid a wreck. Oh, yeah. Matt? Well, in the 24, Jeff Gordon, when they pitted on that previous caution, they were going to go for track position, gas only, but a miscue in the pits. The crew was pushing the car forward, but they didn't know that Jeff was blocked in. Jeff was starting to back the car up. In the confusion, Jeff stalled the car. At that point, they'd lost that track position they were trying to gain, so they came back in to take out four tires. They restarted in 30th. He's been mired back in traffic. He's now 31st. Another look at what happened to Ricky Craven in turn four a second ago. Looks like Sterling Marlin in the 40 car is going to get in the back of Ricky Craven. Just touch him in the back. Around goes Craven. Does a 360 or 720. I'm not sure exactly which. He did a lot. <laughs> but that's a great driver to not hit anything spinning like that. That's from Kevin Harvick's car. And it looks like that. Uh -oh. Trouble. Casey Man. Atwood. Caution is out. Second crash of the day for Atwood. He got tangled up with John Andretti off turn four earlier. And the serious Dodge has got some serious problems right now. Well, how many caution flags is that? And what was the record again? This will be number 13 and the record 17. Oh, we got a long ways to go. Yeah, well, I hope we don't get to the record. Only got 29 laps to go. I hope we don't have another four or five cautions in that time. The problem that, especially on a one group racetrack like this is cautions breed cautions. I mean, right. you get these cards bunched up side by side and it's almost impossible not to make contact. Especially towards the end of the race. Every spot counts. 32 cars on the lead lap here. I don't think you'll see too many guys diving from pit lane here. No. Yeah, it's almost a, a no-win situation for some of these crew chiefs. Kurt Busch is about the only guy because he's now is on the lead lap, but he's 32nd. He might come down and make adjustments, change tires, because he has nothing to lose. You know, if you're one of these guys that's 10th or 15th and you take the tires, you're going back to 30th. It's not like there's only, you know, 16, 17 cars on the lead lap. So it's, it's really going to be tough for some of these guys to come on to pit road. And so far, no takers. Let's see who is the first guy to dive on the pit road. My guess is, oh, here we go, Hutt Strickland. Oh, I'm sorry, Jeremy Mayfield. Yep. Stacy Compton. John Andretti. Bobby Hamilton, Ricky Craven, Steve Grissom, and, and Kurt Busch, like you said, coming in for tires. So, how did caution flag number 13 get caused? Well, we'll show you. On board. Just got loose getting in. That hurt. It did hurt. And you're right, I think that was exactly what happened. Wally just got loose getting in the corner. So Casey Atwood will join Tony Stewart, Morgan Shepard, Joan Ivacek, Kirk Shelmerdine, and Jeffrey Bodine as those who will not finish the New England 300. 28 laps to go here in New Hampshire. Dale Jarrett's your leader. Little bump and run. They got a little payback for him. Oh, oh he spins around. around. The track clouded in smoke. The point leader, Sterling Marlin, weaving back and forth, but he maintains control. And the caution is out. I don't think. And we got crashing in turn three. Ricky Rudd was slow in turn three. And it looks like Hutt Strickland got together coming back to the yellow.
And it's not done yet. Now there will be a few guys a little bit mad right now under those helmets. That was one of them right there. And, and what Todd was doing, he went down there for the block, which basically, that's what everybody's going to start doing now. Caution flag number 14. Still three shy of the record, thank you. <laughs> and Todd Bodine protecting his uh, seventh place while Earnhardt Jr. goes for the spin off of turn two. Looked like Jr. tried the bump and run a little bit. Todd just... Well, said, what happened, you know, Todd came down and, and made the block. And I think Earnhardt gave him a pop. Probably didn't appreciate it. Here you see right here. Here's where Earnhardt gives him a little bit of pop. Yeah, I'm out of shape. He drove up underneath him, but it, it just got together getting off the corner. And just got into the guardrail. Boy, just got in the guardrail, but boy, it did a lot of damage for just touching it. And look at these guys in that cloud of smoke scrambling everywhere. That whole pack was steaming into that. Oh, man. See oh, what I mean? It didn't look like he hardly hit it until you saw the damage. Never seen the contact. I wonder if Junior, when he made contact with the left rear of Todd Bodine's car with the right front, if it jerked the car to the left. I think it did. BP. I think it broke the car loose yes. exactly when he hit. Yeah. From Jimmy Johnson's car. Now you're relying on your spotter. Where do I go? And there's more wrecks. I have to hurry up and get to this one now. Oh, oh. He's not trying to get it under control. <laughs> That's what we call tank slapper. Evidently, the 23 of Hutt Strickland and...